see who I'm going to ring up first on morning. Mackenzie. So please give her a round of applause too. Mackenzie Linz! Hi! And a young man who's going to be in the middle of these two stunning actresses. It is the brilliant Colin Ford! Yeah. And last, by no means least, give it up for Samantha Maddie! So welcome to London. Thank you very much for joining us. So first question then for me really, tell us a bit about your, each of your characters on Under the Dome for those that haven't actually seen it. Um, I play Nori Calvert Hill. Uh, I am a uh, rebellious teen that actually lived in Los Angeles so I didn't start out in Chester's Mill, um, which is the town where it's based. So I'm on my way to a reform school for um, girls that are a little bit more difficult and uh, I end up getting trapped under the dome with my two moms, Alice and Carolyn. And I play Alice, one of her two moms. We're um, a sort of posh family from Brentwood, California, near Beverly Hills, and I, I uh, play a psychiatrist. Um, and um, we're taking our troubled Teen to reform school when we get trapped under the dome, and um, there's no doctors in the dome. The doctors that worked in the hospital got trapped outside of it, so I end up being um, the only doctor for a period of time that can help people. And uh, I play Joe McAllister, and uh, when Nori Calvert comes to Chester's Mill, she's uh, the most exotic thing that I've ever seen uh, because she's a girl from Los Angeles and it's just I'm kind of a, a young country like middle of America kind of guy who just you know does what he's told and lives on a farm and it's really simple and you know meeting Nori was kind of the most exciting thing that ever happened to Joe and uh, just we kind of go on an adventure throughout the series to figure out what the dome is and, and, and figure it out and you know how we might be able to get it to go away. And for each of you then, what has been so far your favorite part of being on the series? I have to say my favorite part is just, you know, like working with all the people that we work with. I mean, working with Mackenzie and Samantha and the rest of our cast who you know, unfortunately couldn't uh, be here today. But uh, just working with them and creating this series as a whole was probably the, one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. Yeah, it's a pretty spectacular cast, so we've really all had a lot of, a lot of fun together. Um, I've certainly had a lot of fun with these two. I, I would also say that working for Stephen King and getting to meet him and see his enthusiasm for this world and what he created is also pretty cool. Um, definitely agree with these two. The cast is amazing. Um, I think uh, I talked about this a little bit earlier today. Um, one of my favorite things was that Jack Bender, who, if there's any Lost fans here, um, he was one of the creators of Lost and he's now one of the creators of our show, and he really gave us a lot of artistic license to kind of create our characters, even though they were, most of them were based on characters in the book. Um, so I felt like I kind of got to make Nori mine a little bit. Um, so that was really, really fun for me, and that was one of my favorite parts. Okay, now if you have a question in the audience, please feel free to stick your hand up and, and don't be waving at other people because that confuses me. But if you'd like to ask a question, please stick your hand up and I'll bring the microphone around to you and we'll ask and I straight away can see someone. Hello. Uh, um, this goes to any of you. Um, what do you think your character would do and how would they feel if they were given the chance to leave the dome but they had to leave all their friends and family behind? That's interesting um, for Nori, especially because she starts out being so angry because she's an LA girl and she was already being dragged away from her home. So at first she would have done anything to get back to what she's used to and um, comfortable with. But I think once she meets Joe, um, he kind of, they kind of complete each other in a way that she's kind of crazy and he's kind of a little bit less than crazy. So they sort of meet in the middle, like right at the perfect spot. So. Um, She's really found a friend and companion and possibly something more in Joe. Um, so I think it would have been 
hard for her to leave him if she had the chance. And I don't think Joe would have left just because throughout the, the first, you know, throughout the series, like, Joe and Nori, we go on, the adventures that we go on together are in order to, yeah, they are in order to get the dome to come down, but it's for the greater good of Chester's Mill. I mean, me being a, uh, just a citizen there uh, in Chester's Mill, like, I, I kind of feel like it was Joe's duty to figure out what the dome is and, and, and its components and how we might bring it down, and I don't think he would abandon his duty uh, if he was given the opportunity. Alice would never leave her family behind. No way. And Samantha, your character, Alice, she has a diabetes. Now, before you took the role, did you do any research into that? Did you kind of go away and do anything extra just so that you can make the part more believable? Um, well, of course, I did a ton of research online um, and, uh, and, and spoke to a few different people um, about what kind of diabetes she had and what, what her demise would, would be because, um, well, I think at this point we've seen some things that have happened to Alice. I, again, I don't, I don't. The whole first season has already aired in the United States, but um, uh, just in terms of what happens to your body and how you deteriorate when you're lacking insulin, um, absolutely, I did research on that, and we had a medical technician on set um, because lots of different medical issues would come up for the characters. So, so that was really helpful. But it's always scary doing something like that, and because you want to be truthful and seem honest and um, I've gotten some pretty positive feedback about how I got ill so I think I did a good job. I think you did too. Thanks. And in terms of all of you, there's quite an intense atmosphere on this set because obviously you're trapped under a dome. Now once you've finished acting at the end of the day there's going to be some lingering intensity left over. How do you kind of relax and chill out after a kind of day shooting? Well. You know, just uh, while we were shooting, you know, a bunch of us, we had to relocate to a new, uh, so we had to relocate to the East Coast, Wilmington, North Carolina to shoot for a couple months. And, you know, after, you know, having a, we had a pretty large cast and, and to the point where not every single one of us would work every single day or all day, every day. So sometimes, and a lot of us actually stayed in the same, you know, apartment complex, uh, you know, while we were shooting. That way, you know, when we got off work, we could hang out, you know, go eat, you know, do whatever. And we, we had a, like a really good sense of community with the rest of our cast and even uh, a lot of our crew. So, I mean, hanging out after work was uh, something that we did every day to, re to relieve kind of our work stress. Okay. Who else has a question they'd like to ask? I saw a few more, so let's get to you guys. Um, what was the funniest on-set moment? Got it? I have one. I don't know if it's the funniest. Just say one. Okay. Um, well, there was a lot of pranking that happened on set. Um, sometimes on set, off set. Um, there was one day, I don't know, I guess in the UK, do you guys have like prom or formal or anything? Um, junior and senior year of high school, I get to go to like a prom at the end of the year, which is like a school dance. And I had based like a month off of just planning to be able to go to my prom back home. I live in Atlanta, Georgia, so it's about seven hours away from where we were working. So it took a long time. I got my dress. I had everything ready, my date, everything, and um, it was all planned. And then I was supposed to drive through the night because I had to work on a Friday and the dance was on a Saturday. Um, so, and everyone knew about it because I just wouldn't shut up about it because I was so excited. <laughs> but, um, so I came to set and Colin comes up to me and says, Ken's, I have bad news. I was like, okay. He's like, we have to work tomorrow. And I was like, no, we don't. We don't have to work. And um, he got my mother, um, all of our crew, and everyone to convince me that we were working the next day about two hours before my dance started. You turkey, I didn't know you did that. I did, I did. <laughs> Brutal. So I remember just panicking and then I turned around and saw his little grin and um, so he pranked me. But I couldn't. But kudos to you because you got me. I didn't hold it very long, it was, uh, it was quick. I know because I... I was about to cry. <laughs> Uh, we have a question from a, a little young lady here. She's asked me to ask, she's right down the front, sorry. Oh, yeah. 
She's asked me, this young lady here has asked me to ask you all, what made you want to do Under the Dome? project to begin with just looking at the names um, and uh, I remember my mom read Under the Dome and I would always ask her what was happening when she was reading it so I kind of was familiar with the project um, and it was just an awesome opportunity from the start so it was very exciting. No, I, when I uh, first discovered that you know I'd be auditioning and reading for the role of Joe for Under the Dome I, I was you know really excited. I didn't know a lot about under the dome at that point in time, uh, but I was really excited about the fact that I could possibly be working with with people like Stephen King and Steven Spielberg and Jack Bender and uh, you know our amazing the rest of our amazing cast as well. Um, I was actually on coming off of a knee injury at the time where I was on crutches, so I still say to this day that I got the job because the people the, you know our, our producers and the cast members and everyone they felt bad for me in the room because I came in on crutches, so. I'm putting it out there. I mean, I would say the same for me, that just the pedigree of people that were involved in the project, from Steven Spielberg to Stephen King to Jack Bender and Neil Bayer, also our showrunner creator, um, was really high. And this is the third time I've worked on a Stephen King project. And um, I just think he's such a tremendous writer. And he's so very good at creating characters that are flawed and human and then sticking them into extraordinary situations and really letting those situations reveal to people their true nature and the idea of this dome in which all these people are trapped and they get to see how really generous they are as human beings or not how selfish they will be or not how brave how much of a, a team player how much of a part of a community or not and i think that Stephen King is just so good at showing people a mirror of themselves and and the, their flaws and their and their good parts. So I knew that it would be an interesting project to work on. Now we have a question from a lady in the middle. Hi, I was just wondering um, when you like look over the script. Has the script always been kind of like really solid to you, or have there been moments where you've been, well, a little bit confused and not sure what the writers have been, well, writing about? Um, the, uh, we would get the scripts um, a little bit before we would shoot each, like, each episode, and um, one of the things that I did, and I know um, Alex, who plays Junior, was really, really good about this. Um, he took notes, and he would read his script and write notes. And um, you, I mean, it was we kind of always followed the story. Um, if that's what you're asking, like if we were ever confused about the story, I don't think I ever was, just because I was so much a part of it every single day. Sure. Um, so, I guess I hope that answered your question. <laughs> okay, and we have a question from the lady here. Hi, um, when you're filming um, scenes with the dome and the mini dome, do you ever like touch anything or is it all mine? Yeah, we do. Actually, we have a fake dome, mini dome. Uh, well, for the big dome, actually, we use multiple different things. Sometimes it'll actually uh, not be there and we'll have to fake it with our hands. Sometimes we'll have a big plexiglass like screen that they put the camera behind and uh, we have to, every take, every time we touch our hands to it, every, at the, every time they say cut, we have to clean the whole uh, plexiglass screen because we can't be any new handprints on there. So that's, uh, that was a big ordeal when we were shooting. And then also for the mini dome, they just replicated a, a small spherical uh, plexiglass dome as well that we would put our hands on. And staying in the middle. What really like stood out to you? What was like your favorite part? I remember. Uh, I think this actually was the third time that I'd seen the episode because uh, we all got. I think we got DVDs before it premiered, but um, we were in the premiere in Wilmington, North Carolina, where we shot. They just did like a screening, and we were with everyone almost. And um, it's it's really it's cool. Um, I remember being proud. 
and just very um, humbled that it was real. <laughs> so it was cool um, to see everyone on screen and see kind of how everyone was starting to develop their characters even in the first episode. No, I think, this, I think our special effects were pretty cool too. And uh, that was one of my favorite parts to see come alive um, in, the finish, in the finished product because when we're there and we're shooting on the day, like we're reacting to things that aren't actually there. We're having to make them up, or we're looking. You know, if we're looking at an eye line, we're looking at a some guy handing, you know, holding a stick in the air. Like I mean, it's, you know, it's crazy sometimes the things that we, that we have to do to to make it seem real. So seeing the finished product and seeing what we were thinking we were looking at come alive is really interesting sometimes. And uh, we have a question for the lady here. Hello. Um, how does the storyline compare to the book? And how many of you actually read it before you looked at the script? I came onto the project pretty late. And I had about five days before I showed up in Wilmington, North Carolina. So I got about 150 pages into the book. And I quickly realized that my character wasn't in the book and that I needed to start working on the script and start working with Aisha and Mackenzie specifically to create a backstory for our family and, and really know clearly where our family was as a, as a, as a group on, in the first scene where we met them. I felt like that was such, such an important thing. Um, so we didn't have that in the book, or I didn't have that in the book to look to. So we really, for me, that was a big focus. Yeah, it was very, um, Nori is in the book, but her name is Nori Calvert, not Nori Calvert Hill. And she has, she's lived in the town her whole life. And um, I'd known a little bit of backstory because my mom had read the book and um, I kind of looked it up just to see like the basic story. And um, I kind of made the decision that I didn't want to take anything away from Nori because she was so different in the book um, and bringing her onto the screen as the same from the book wouldn't have done um, what done the series justice because she's so different and she also has to have this connection to her two moms. Um, so like Samantha said, it was very important to build our family dynamic before we read the book. No, I, I, I agree with Kim's actually uh, exactly on that. When I got to set, it was... Um, it was a decision that I, it was a conscious decision that I made to not um, indulge myself in the way that my character would be played in the book and because it, it might be different than our writers wrote for the script and I didn't want to love the way Joe was in the book and not be able to play that on screen or vice versa or you know, whatever it may be, I didn't want to have any uh, complications between my character. Okay, and we have our next question here. Uh, yes, seizures are incredibly awkward and weird <laughs> and hard to do. And uh, I mean, me and Ken's both did a little bit of you know research on that, but there's only you know so much that you can you know look up between you know YouTube and, and, and you know factual stuff about and the actual uh, you know conditions you know, with people with like, epilepsy and stuff like that. We had a, a medical tech um, on set. Her name was Kristen, and she um, was there because. If you guys remember, Colin and I had seizures, but we had them separately at first, and then we did one together, um, <laughs> which is a whole other story. But um, she um, kind of instructed me in what they would have been doing, and I looked up videos and um, researched what it would have been like, um, because obviously it's not an epileptic seizure, um, because right. Joe and Nori don't have epilepsy. Right. It's something that the dome is doing to them. Um, so Kristen was kind of trying uh, to make it as accurate as possible nonetheless. Um, so the seizures that we were doing were um, based on kind of what our medical tech was talking and based on our research. So I mean, they were off of accurate information. And we are on, on your route right now. We have another question. Hi, yeah. I've been watching the channel Feed, so I haven't seen the season finale. Obviously, the big stars are falling, and that's being built as a symbol along with the monarch of the Is that something that will be revealed in the season finale? You know, can you repeat your question? Just on mic a little bit more. We're having a little trouble hearing you, sweetie. 
sorry, um, I haven't seen the season finale yet, so maybe it, this is answered. However, um, obviously the pink stars are falling and the monarch butterflies have been built up as a huge symbol and clues have been left. Is this an enigma that will be answered at the end of the season or carried into season two? Uh, in the finale, there's like a, a lot <laughs> that you find out. Um, you'll definitely find out more about the dome, um, more about the monarch, and more about the big <laughs> It's hard to tell you because it's better if you just watch it, I promise. And if, if, all, of, if it, all, all three of you were trapped in a real dome, how do you think you'd cope with it and what would be the, the thing you'd miss the most from the outside world? Um, my iPhone? Yeah, the lack of technology, you know, technology doesn't work in the dome, so, and, and if you get too close to it, it'll even, you know, blow up on you, literally, so, you know, having technology would probably some, would be something that I would, would miss a lot. See, we were talking about this earlier in a press interview, and actually, for me, I've had certain times in my life where I've had fantasies of having a lack of technology in my life, which I think sort of speaks to that we're from different generations. Um, and although I love my iPhone, and I love my iPad, and I love to text, um, I sometimes fantasize about not having technology and what that would be like to, you know, sit at a dinner and have someone not pick up their phone 12 times, including myself. Um, and, you know, I, I, I don't think that's far off in terms of one of the things that S Stephen King was looking at in the many sort of themes that he was looking at um, in creating the show. But I would say for myself, I'd miss the, my, my loved ones the most. Yeah. I know that's corny. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Over on the right again, I have a question for anybody here. Uh, I was wondering what you would consider the best and worst attributes of your characters. I think uh, Joe's lack of experience in the, uh, I don't know, I guess girl world, you know, Joe, like, he meets this girl that is so, like, different and exotic than anything he's ever seen before, and, but he's intelligent and he's smart, but that's, it doesn't go much further than that, like, he doesn't know how to talk to a girl, so I think that that's, like, his, his like, weakest link, really, is, like, he, he likes this girl and he just, everything he says just sounds so dumb, like, it's just, you know, it's, he's having a hard time with it. Nori um, is very passionate, and everything she does and everyone she's with, she's very passionate about, whether it's in a good way or a bad way. Um, I think, although you see her kind of in sort of a rebellious sense towards her two moms, I think, especially throughout this season, she realizes that they're all she has. And although she's developing this relationship um, with Joe, I think she is just a genuine, caring person, and she's very smart. Um, the downside to that is she can kind of take it over the top a little bit sometimes and, um, and build up a wall that kind of shuts everyone else out. Um, and then I think what's interesting about the dome is although the dome's trapping her behind a wall, I think it's bringing her own wall down um, and changing her character a lot. So. Um, that's kind of where she's at. I would just say that Alice is an incredible caretaker by nature, being a, a psychiatrist and then having also trained as a doctor. And, and the way that she mothers Nori, she's the softer of the two um, in, in that family dynamic. And um, she's incredibly empathetic. Unfortunately, um, she gets so lost in caretaking uh, other people and sort of doing the right thing that she doesn't look out for her own health and that ends her up in, in, in a lot of trouble. Okay, we have a time for one final question on the right again from this gentleman. Hello, I just have a, a question of a personal nature. Were any of you familiar with Brian K. Vaughan's work, previous work with graphic novels when you started Under the Dome? I wasn't. I wasn't really familiar with it, but I was a huge comic book nerd when I was a kid. <laughs> you? Um, no. <laughs> well, there we are, ladies and gentlemen. That is all the list. We've got, may I have time to squeeze one more question? If anyone has one more question.
Well, right, now five people's hands go up. <laughs> right, okay, we're gonna go to the gentleman whose hand I saw go up first. So, I'll go to you, so you can answer the last question. Hello, guys. Hello. A, a lot of you guys on the smaller sci-fi series go into bigger films. Have you guys got any plans? Right now, um, we are on break in between uh, shooting season one and season two. I don't know if you guys know um, that we officially got picked up for a season two. Um, so, yeah, that's exciting. Um, but we're on break right now, and I'm a senior in high school, so um, I'm at home going to school. I'm with my family. Um, so I'm just kind of uh, enjoying that until we get to go back to work, which I'm also very excited about. <laughs> Yeah, we're def I mean, I'm definitely enjoying uh, having a little bit of time off right now and, and, and being able to hang out with my friends and family and uh, excited about going back to shoot season two. But at the same time, before uh, I was in Under the Dome, um, film was something that I was, you know, really wanting to be a part of and, and had been a part of uh, a couple projects before. And that's really like where my heart uh, sits is with film. And even though I'm really excited about going back and doing season two, it's just I, I, I really love film and I definitely want to get back uh, to doing film later in my career. Um, I, I mean, I love doing a mix of everything, um, uh, television and film. Uh, I did just finish a pilot um, for AMC. I don't know if we'll actually be making a series or not, <clears throat> but they're the channel in the United States that makes Breaking Bad and The Walking Dead, and um, uh, so uh, I just finished doing that, and um, there may be life for Alice in the dome in the future um, as well, so we'll see. I may be doing both next year. Well, ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving a massive round of applause to our Dome panelists for this afternoon. Thank you.